Hey everybody, this is Doa, and today we're going to watch a game from the Black Dragon League, and it stars a Zerg player. That's right, Roxas Abver. I know some of you have been saying, hey, there's way too much TVT and TVP on your channel. We want to see some Zerg games. So here is what's probably going to be a very good game with a Zerg player. Um, I don't know if he wins, though, so if he doesn't, sorry, Zerg fans. But anyway, we've got Roxas Abver spawning in the upper right part of uh, Shakuris Plateau. His opponent is going to be Mao's Mana spawning as our red Protoss player down here at about the 7 o'clock-ish position on Shakuris Plateau, of course. And this is a game from the uh, Black Dragon League, which, aside from having a really awesome name for a league, is uh, apparently a pretty big EU tournament. It's got a lot of the best European players competing in it. Um, I did a little bit of research on it. Apparently has, it has a pretty large prize pool of something like $6,000 or something like that. Um, I'm going to include the, uh, the link to the Team Liquid page on there and also include the uh, link to the replay site for the Black Dragon League's website so you guys can check out their stuff and uh, see their other replays and kind of learn more about the event too because I think there's a lot of awesome events going on in StarCraft 2 right now and we want to uh, recognize that and promote them. And, um, yeah, you know, that's actually something that I was going to mention in one of my casts as we watch this probe find, uh, as we watch a probe of mana find uh, Abra right away, actually. Some players do like to scout cross-positionally first on Shakuris Plateau. That's actually something I'm seeing a little bit more often lately. But, um, anyway, what I was going to say is, um, this is kind of out to all those other uh, YouTube casters out there. Um, one thing that we're going to want to sort of pay attention to now that SC2 is getting a little bit bigger as far as the events and the money and the, the promotion for that, um, if you cast a replay from someone else's event, please, please, please post a link to their site and uh, a link to their event in your description and at least, you know, mention it in your video here. We don't want to be seen, you know, us YouTube casters, we don't want to be seen as stealing replays. Um, from the other uh, groups and organizations. We want to have a nice relationship between uh, the people who put on these events for us and provide us with these great games and between the, the people like me and the other YouTube casters that want to uh, bring those to you in a little bit different form if you didn't happen to catch them live or you don't find the VODs. So yeah, please, if you're going to replay a game from or uh, recast a game from an event, please, please plug it. It's uh, the right thing to do, guys. So anyway, going back to the game, I digress. We do see uh, Avver getting his gas and pool. Looks like he's probably going to be going for Zergling speed after his expansion. That's a, a pretty common thing in a ZVP these days. I actually casted a uh, EU event just the other day, just on Saturday. It was Prototype Cup number three, which I had a ton of fun casting. And uh, one thing I noticed is all the Zergs I casted tried to Baneling bust their Protoss opponents. I don't know if we're going to see that in this game, but that just struck me as something that was really interesting because I don't really see that much on the North American server. Um, it's kind of funny because I actually kind of prefer to do that when I end up playing uh, Zerg versus Protoss, but let's uh, forget about that for a second. Looks like we have a little bit of Cannon Rush action going from Mana on this uh, natural expansion of Abra. Abra forced to cancel that expansion. He doesn't really have anything that can kind of take out these cannons right at this moment. And uh, Mana actually canceling the cannons as well, kind of leaving one on the low ground just as sort of a little bit of extra defensive nuisance. And what is this? It's a proxy hatchery from Adver in the base of Mao's Mana. And, um, you know, I don't think he can see it. He can't, actually. The bases on Shakur's Plateau are quite big enough to hide something like this, and this is only the second time I've seen this since that one game of cats that I casted. So now I'm getting uh, pretty excited about this game. Looks like we do have a forge and a gateway, of course, for Mana. Gonna try to keep an eye on what's going on here. Some Zerglings moving across the map for Adver. A little bit of gather on gather action here as well. More Zergling, Zerglings coming out. Looks like after this hatchery spawns, he's gonna try to use the Zerglings to uh, maybe hit things from both sides, try to pull the Zealot out of position, but honestly, I've just never really seen something like this before. Um, I'm, I guess I'm gonna be learning right along with you, so uh, really interested to see what happens. He could also use these drones if he gets in there to put some spine crawlers down next to his hatchery, and Mana is getting very, very close to seeing it, but he doesn't. Here comes the creep very soon here. It looks like a little bit of a interjection, I suppose, by the probe. And now Mana's got to see something. No, the creep hasn't extended that far quite yet. And uh, Abver actually expanding to Mana's natural as well. So three bases up for Abver right now as well as a bunch of Zerglings. And Mana has no idea that any of this is going on. Never mind, he did see the hatchery right now, but what is he going to do about it? He has three Zealots in the base. He's going to move after this hatchery. Right now we do have a queen on the way here. Zerglings trying desperately to get in, but that Zealot is heroically blocking and another pylon goes down to block that off. Looks like we have more action in the base of Mana. There's a lot to keep track of already in this game. Zerglings going after the probes as well. There is a cannon down there, so that's going to uh, be very good for Mana. I think he's going to be able to hold this off somehow. It looks like he's got enough between the Stalker and the Zealots that Queen is going to go down very, very quickly, it looks like. 
A large group of Zerglings coming in for Abver though, but it looks like Abver, it looks like Mana, I'm getting the players confused again suddenly, it looks like Mana is going to be able to take out at least this hatchery from uh, Roxas Abver. Stalker's going to need to be a little bit careful there, surviving the Zergling aggression. Actually, only taking a couple of points of hit point damage, so not bad at all. And uh, let's take a look at a few other things around here. Looks like we still have this hatchery over there. Looks like no hatchery at the natural for Avery yet. Still pumping out quite a few Zerglings and sending a few drones over there as well. Uh, Zergling speed is finished, of course. He's going to run around the base a little bit. So uh, Mana is in a very, very interesting position here. Zealots are going to take some damage from the Broodlords. We're going to have to see if any of those take enough damage to really make a difference. Doesn't look like a whole lot. In the meantime, we have more Zerglings trying to break in here. They are probably going to be able to take down the Stalker, but I don't think they're going to be able to take out anything else. We do have some spine crawlers being built now as well. He can push if he uses an Overlord for Vision to hit these buildings at the choke point for Mana. So wow, I just have no idea how this game's going to turn out right now. Uh, Robo Bay going down actually for Mana as well as the second gateway as well. And I need to turn off those notifications when I cast games, but hey, whatever, we're in the middle of this already, so let's keep going. I promise you someday I'm going to release a bloopers reel of all the ways I screw up cast at the very beginning and then get angry and quit. So uh, look forward to that in the future someday. As far as the Zerg front goes, this hatchery, of course, has been destroyed. This hatchery's got some spine crawlers up right now. Uh, no hatchery at the natural for Avery yet. And no second gas or anything yet either. Just kind of pumping out lings and spine crawlers. Let's take a look at the uh, army tab for just a second. We do have Mana a little bit ahead, 44 to 30. Nine in the supply, but here comes a big push with the queens and the spine crawlers. Zerglings, of course, giving the vision to the spine crawlers for now, as there's not really an overlord in the area. Never mind, there he is. He was hidden in the amid the purple mass of the swarm. But these spine crawlers doing lots and lots of damage to this. If you can take out this pylon, that's going to let the zerglings get in as soon as this force field goes down. No other counterattacks really from Mana. He still just has a, a couple pylons. Looks like he is getting a small force there to uh, move in on the main base of Abver eventually. He's kind of biding his time for now because he does need the defenses at his main. And uh, wow, actually Mana in a little bit of a difficult position. I, have, I kind of have a hard time predicting exactly what's going to go on. Nice force field actually preventing those speedlings from getting in yet again. But these spine crawlers so threatening right now. Don't want to lose an overlord to a cannon. Be careful there. One queen does get in. She is the hero queen. She is the Xeno warrior princess of queens, but it's not going to help. She's going to die very, very quickly. That is absolutely disgusting. Is that her spine? Gross. I think there was something wiggling in there, too. Ugh. Terran are much more palatable, I would say. In the meantime, we do have some immortals coming out. Those are going to be uh, pretty helpful, I would say. Able to fire from the high ground and do a decent amount of damage. And in the meantime, looks like there's a lot of speedlings here. In the main, as the units for Mana did try to attack here, getting cleaned up very, very quickly, though. Yeah, we saw just a couple Zealots and Sentries down there, but uh, not a lot of damage caused by Mana. So Mana's still pinned in his base, and I'm trying to kind of think of what he could do to uh, escape from that. I suppose possibly he could consider breaking down his rocks and expanding to the smiley face right here, but it's it's really hard to say. In the meantime, we do have uh, Adver kind of cleaning things up outside his natural base, taking out the cannon and the pylon. Meantime, the Queen's still trying to push in with those Spine Crawlers as well. Spine Crawler poking away the Giraffe Head of Death. Poking into the pylon and actually, whoops, Adver losing an Overlord there. The cannons are going to keep Mana a little bit secure. Another Queen gets in to try to give some, vin some uh, vision for this pylon. Even if this pylon does go down, of course, uh, Mana still has quite a bit defending himself. Immortal going after that Spine Crawler. Nice transfuse there, actually. And all the speedlings almost poking in for just a second. There are four, four uh, sentries there, so he can kind of infinitely block this ramp if his micro is good enough. We do see Hallucination being researched as well. I'm kind of curious if he's going to use that to get maybe a Phoenix and just do some scouting with that. Or uh, try to possibly look more threatening as he pushes. But right now, wow, with all these spine crawlers, uh, seven spine crawlers. Abver is uh, quite secure at his uh, stolen natural base. And um, this is something I've actually been hearing about a little bit more often. I haven't really seen it much in a game, too, but a lot of Zerg players, well, not a lot, but some crazy Zerg players, I'll say this, are taking the natural of their Protoss opponent and uh, pushing with spine crawlers. Looks like the Immortals trying to do some damage. They do manage to focus down one spine crawler. Immortals, of course, doing tons of damage to units like that. Why, you may ask? And the reason for that is the Verse Armored 50 damage, of course. Little transfuse going down on one of those spine crawlers to keep it in tip-top shape. 
And indeed, it looks like Mana has broken down his rocks and he will expand at the smiley face here. Still trying to uh, guard this area. Looks like the Immortals were able to pick off another spine crawler. Now in the meantime, what Mana is trying to do right now, as we can see, is putting up his robotics bay. Also getting uh, plus one weapons for ground. So I think what he's going to try to do is eventually use Colossus and the range that they afford to uh, sort of take out this from a long, long distance. It's going to take him a long time, though, to get that upgrade. Nice job using the Observer there to take out some Creep Tumors. And there goes the Phoenix, or the Hallucinated Phoenix, rather, for Miles Mana. He's going to be doing some scouting to see what his opponent has. Back at the main base, two base, two gas now, rather, for Abra. It looks like he is expanding to his natural as well. And right now, still a little bit of a stalemate here. Neither player really able to uh, move out right now. I have to say, this is one of the most entertaining games of StarCraft II I've seen in a long time. I'm quite enjoying casting this right now. Some Zerglings running in, trying to be heroes. Tell my kids I was a hero. Although Zerglings probably don't have any kids. I'm trying to imagine what Zergling kids would look like. Maybe Broodlings. Immortals again, trying to poke in. He's going to have to be careful. He doesn't want to get surrounded by those Zerglings. It looks like Mana may lose one of these Immortals. And they are actually vital to his survival. Great, great force fields there. But Zerglings are going to find his next expansion here. They're going to go in and probably kill quite a few probes. Looks like we do have a couple Stalkers being warped in. Some Zealots are there to uh, reinforce right now as well. Zerglings having to pull back a little bit. He's going to be able to pick off just a couple probes. But it looks like the Zealots will be able to clean that out fairly easily. Meantime, Cannon's doing a little bit more damage to the Queen. Nice transfuse again on the Overlord. And so Mana has this... Fairly well defended with the second expansion now. He will be able to macro up a little bit. Sure enough, Mana is getting the extended Thermal Lance. That's kind of going to be his key to pushing out here and eventually taking this down. Um, what he can do is put his Colossus up on the ledge here and shoot down with the uh, Thermal Lance, of course, and then force field the ramp so he can't be surrounded with Zerglings. And I'm curious to see what sort of response Abra is going to have for that. He's got to know that Mana is going to go for something like that at this point, but really not many other tech buildings. There's a Spire finally going down for Abra. I was going to say he could probably use Corruptors to uh, anticipate those Colossus. I'm curious to see if that's what he's going to do or if he's going to just possibly try to uh, harass with Mutalisk or something like that. Looks like we do have Aver. He's uh, going to be trying to break down these rocks, but with this cannon there, I don't know if he's going to be able to. Actually, that cannon is not going to be able to hit those Zerglings. That may actually be a good thing to do a little bit later on. Immortal's still trying to threaten a little bit. This one getting very, very low on shields, though. And it's Spinecrawler City still at the base of Roxas Aver. Lots of Spinecrawlers at discount prices. Come to Spinecrawler City in Europe. <laughs> Apparently on Shirkcrest Plateau. And that looks like we do have two Colossus out right now for Mana. The Thermal Lance has just finished, and here comes the attack from Mana. He's going to be able to go to work on these Spine Crawlers. The Queens do probably have enough energy to get a couple Transfuses down. With this Overlord giving Vision too, they can hit the Colossus, but the Colossus DPS is going to do quite a bit more than the Queens can really threaten, I think, at this point, of course. So with the reinforcement of the Stalkers, I think Adver may actually need to pull back, and sure enough, he is pulling back those Spine Crawlers. And it looks like he is just going to push completely out. He's not going to try to just sit back and hit from the high ground for a lot. A lot of time he's going to be a little bit aggressive here, moving in, going after the hatchery. And I think he's going to be getting able to get it without really any issue at all. The hatchery definitely going down here. Broodlings being roasted, and all these spine crawlers are probably going to go down very, very quickly. He's just going to need to keep them out of range of his units. There you go. The Colossus having no trouble at all hitting those. Meantime, we do have another base for Roxas Avra going up as well. The Natural's in full swing. The uh, main is starting to get a little bit low, but the first, first Mutalisks, as we can see, are out on the field right now. We do see Mana cleaning up the rest of this uh, kind of fake Natural expansion for Avra. The new Natural. Zerg Manifest Destiny extending its way across the map here. In the meantime, we do have some Zerglings going after the rocks. As soon as they break through, they're going to be able to do a lot of damage. One cannon is not going to be able to hold off the uh, swarm for too long. In the meantime, lots of Mutalisks coming in right now. This expansion is going to be pretty much shut down. They're not going to be too terrified of one Stalker and one cannon. Those Zealots, of course, not able to be too zealous in their defense of that base. We do see some drones being transferred over, some of them getting a little bit singed from the Colossus. That's going to clue Mana into where another base may be. Mana moving out in a big way, actually going all in, bringing all the probes right now. 
and there's really nothing stopping him from rolling in and just killing Abver. Now he has lost his expansion here as well, and the Mutalisks are moving across the map to try to engage this army. They're probably going to be able to catch a lot of the probes here, but here comes the army of Mana moving into the base of Abver. Mana may actually be able to take this game. He's got quite a few stalkers. There are a lot of Mutalisks out on the field right now. We're going to have to see how he can defend it. This hatchery going down very, very quickly right now. Uh, flyer attacks level 1 not quite finished yet for uh, Avery. Here come the Mutalisks right now. Nice Guardian Shield going down. That's going to cut the damage of the Mutalisks by quite a bit. The Stalkers are going down very, very quickly. I don't think he has the numbers. Aver may win this game. Starting to look pretty good for our Zerg player here. But the game is still relatively young. It could go on for a while, yet the Stalkers do go down. These Colossus will be cleaned out. Now the Hatchery may actually go down as well before the Mutalisks can take them out. I think it will. The Hatchery getting very, very low. Aver transferring his drones away, but they're all going to be roasted by the Colossus. The Hatchery does fall. So right now, Aver down to just one base over in this corner of the map, but that dies immediately from the Zealots on another attack from Mana. And Aver with no bases at all right now. He is rebuilding his Hatchery here. It has to be canceled. Aver desperately trying to get a base. He does have a good amount of Mutalists to keep himself in the game right now, but he's losing all of his buildings at such a rapid rate. In the meantime, back at the base of Mao's Mana, he is completely mined out. He has no bases to mine from at all right now. If we take a look at the army tab, 34 to 31, Mao's Mana slightly behind right now. All those probes, of course, did die as well. And so now Mana has to kind of gather his forces to defend against this large amount of Mutalists. Did the attack level 1 finish? It did end up finishing there. We do see Aver actually taking two more bases. He did have a little bit of a trust fund built up, thankfully, here. And these four stalkers are not going to be anywhere near what Mana needs to defend this. Mana in serious trouble of losing this game right now. Serious danger, that is. I just realized I had the life bars on for this entire game, but hey, sometimes people like to see that, so hopefully you enjoyed that anyway as well. Observer still kind of keeping an eye on the natural. Aver cleaning up the last of Mana's... Zealots, they're not going to be able to cause any damage at all, and I think Aver has won this game. I don't really see what Mana can do to stay in it. Um, we do have a couple observers wishing they had some sort of weapons right now. Kind of feeling a little bit ineffective just being able to fly and look like tiny little flying squid robots. That's a technical term, of course. And now we see the Ball of Mutas finally rolling into the base of Mao's Mana. Basically unopposed. There's really not much Mana can do for it. Looks like he's down to just 31 minerals. He can't produce any more units. I'm really surprised we haven't seen a GG yet. All he has is observers out on the field right now. Um, really not sure what's holding up the GG at this point. Because Mao's Mana has lost this game. There you go, Zerg players. We do have a Zerg winning on a game that Doha has casted. GG, a G for each line showing how Mao's Mana has enjoyed this game so much, and it was probably the craziest game I've ever seen on Shakura's Plateau. Wow, I love games of StarCraft 2 like this. I love casting StarCraft 2 in general. If you if you love listening to me cast, please subscribe, and also definitely check out www.therushnetwork.com. I do live casting for them, and I usually cast pretty much every Saturday and Sunday. I believe this Saturday I'm probably again going to cast a Prototype Cup. I hope. Uh, keep an eye on that. Also, again, definitely check out the Black Dragon League and their website. I'll have links in the description. They're doing a lot of awesome things, obviously producing some very cool games for us. So again, uh, thanks for uh, watching, guys. Keep playing StarCraft 2, and I will see you on the next cast.